NASCAR's penalty report came out. Joey Logano got an additional penalty, and Stuart Haas Racing got caught trying to cheat again. Plus, should Texas become the next Atlanta? You knew Joey Logano and Stuart Haas Racing were going to be on NASCAR's Tuesday penalty report when it came out, and now we know what the penalties are for both of them. We'll start with Joey Logano because his glove seems to have captivated the internet. This is what's wrong with NASCAR. This is why NASCAR's dying. This is why I don't watch anymore. All because of apparently Joey Logano modifying his glove. So obviously at this point, we know what Joey Logano did. He added a piece of webbing point between his thumb and his index finger so he could put that left hand up next to the window net to deflect air from coming into the cockpit. Does it help him out? Eh, you could argue that maybe it helps out with a thousandth of a second, but it's not the huge competitive advantage that maybe they think it is. Regardless, NASCAR wasn't happy about that modification. So on Tuesday, NASCAR talked on SiriusXM about what the penalty for at track was. So at track, they gave him a pass through as well as dropping to the rear at the start of the race. That was for having the glove, for the performance advantage that the glove could have provided. We don't actually know for providing advantage. Regardless, that's what that penalty was for. The penalty that he received on Tuesday a $10,000 fine, that was for the modification of his SFI rated glove. NASCAR does not like when anybody tampers with their safety equipment and adding that piece of webbing in along with the threading, it's no longer SFI rated because NASCAR doesn't know if that webbing is flame retardant. They don't know about the threading. It's just dangerous. At the end of the day, NASCAR takes safety very seriously. They've already been through the bad years. They've already lost a lot of people. And yeah, is a piece of webbing going to cost Joey Logano his arm, his hand? Probably not. But at the end of the day, NASCAR has a precedent. They do not like when people modify safety equipment, and they're going to hammer you every single time that you do it. So don't do it. I did find it hilarious that the internet was like, oh, that wasn't in there to put his hand up to block the air. It was in there so that when he's in a wreck, it, the steering wheel doesn't rip his thumbs off and break his hand. What are we What are we even talking about right now? My other favorite one was, no, no, he puts his hand out the window like that and it deflects more air into the car to keep him cool. Wh what? What are we... T the internet, who seemingly all hate Joey Logano, were certainly coming out of the woodwork to create these excuses for Joey because they apparently don't like the way NASCAR governs. It was very bizarre to me. Uh, both of the videos that I did on this on TikTok went, you know, got a lot of traction, have a ton of comments, and there is a bunch of uneducated responses in there. What Joey did was for the arrow. It was all for performance. It had nothing to do with his thumbs getting caught up in a crash. It had nothing to do with him wanting to deflect air into the cockpit. That's not going to do any what I don't understand it regardless he has a $10,000 fine to pay and we won't see him again he obviously did use it at Daytona as well because it's very evident that he takes the left glove off uh right after his run why why would you do that so he gets his penalty we also have a Stuart Haas racing penalty NASCAR confiscated the roof rails on both the 41 car and the 10 car those are not single source supplied parts those are team supplied they come from a CAD draw and the team you know creates them, fabricates them, puts them on the car, and obviously they didn't meet NASCAR specifications, so NASCAR handed them a 35-point penalty, both owners and drivers. And let's be honest here, Stuart Haas Racing's best bet to get into the playoffs is probably to win, not through pointing their way in. Regardless, if you're going to cheat, you should at least be fast. And it feels like Stuart Haas Racing does try to get away with some cheating on a decent amount of a decent amount of times and every single time they're just not fast how do you cheat and you're not quicker they seemingly continue to run at the back and it's just another thing with Stuart Haas Racing where you're like we we want you to be competitive everybody wants Stuart Haas Racing to be competitive and they just simply refuse if it was, if it was up to me I would just be faster and they don't want to do that instead they're trying to you know, modify the roof rails, apparently. NASCAR wasn't happy with it, and of course the team can appeal as well, although NASCAR's new appeal process certainly doesn't fall in favor with the teams. Regardless, 35-point penalty didn't mention any monetary fine, which is kind of interesting from that standpoint. So, which actually, now that I think about it, when they changed the penalty scale last year, it does make sense now. Anyways, Sewer House Racing got hit with a penalty once again. Joey Logano got his penalty. If you're not sick about talking about Atlanta yet, let's talk about it a little bit more. So obviously it delivered an all-time classic NASCAR finish. Was it an all-time classic race? Eh, for a super speedway, sure. Was it the best Gen 7 race that we've seen so far? 
on a super speedway, probably. It wasn't the best Gen 7 race we've seen overall. No, not at all. Um, but still, it has left people talking. And the biggest talking point now is, will Texas Motor Speedway become the next Atlanta? Will it also be turned into a super speedway? Part of me leans towards yes, that they will do it. So they mentioned back in July of 2023 that they were looking at a couple of different variations of Texas with iRacing. And you have to assume one of those is probably what we see in Atlanta, that super speedway style setup. I don't want to see seven super speedway, potentially even eight super speedway races on the calendar. I think six is enough. But this is kind of the MO for NASCAR, right? Where they find something that works and then they continue to go right back to it like a honeypot. They're like a drug addict. They're like, we got to get this high. We got to get this high. We got to get this high. Much like road courses. Two road courses did really well. Three road courses did pretty good. Six road courses, everybody's like, can we stop going to road courses all the time? I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a pretty diverse schedule. Do we need six, potentially seven super speedway races? No. Will that help captivate an audience? Yes. However, it's all artificial. It's manufactured at the end of the day. It's not actual racing in a sense. And you could argue that it is actual racing because what is actual racing, right? It's it's relative. It's up to everybody's interpretation of what that means. The only way I'm okay with Atlanta becoming the next super speedway or a super speedway in general is if Atlanta loses one of its dates. So right now, Texas has its spring date this year. Last year, it had a playoff date, and they had to do something because their playoff date last year, it was empty. And those aren't people dressed up as aluminum bleachers. That's just a bunch of empty seats, regardless of how they want to try to spin it. So my thought process is if Texas gets turned into super speedway after this year's race in April, then potentially Atlanta should lose one of its dates to North Wilkesboro if they want to get a points paying date um, at North Wilkesboro or the fairgrounds if that ever happens, which it won't. But we'll just go ahead and throw it in here for the sake of the argument. That way you are still at six super speedway races. If they don't move one of Atlanta's dates, then that means that there will likely be seven. And I think seven's getting into the territory of probably too many. Because at this point, super speedways were like, I don't want to call them a treat, but they were different on the schedule, right? You had your Daytona 500, then you had Talladega in the spring, and then you had Daytona in the summer, and then you had Talladega in the fall. And it felt like, you know, as each quarter of the season got one, and it was a wild card, and it was fun. Now it's like we start off with two, we go to Talladega in just over a month, I think, at this point. Uh, and then we have a decent break until we get to Daytona in August. But then it's Daytona, Darlington, Atlanta, and then Talladega in the playoffs as well. And they're like stacked on top of each other. If you're going to do it, you need to spread them out. I'm not saying we should do it because basically if you add in a seventh one, that's one every five races, essentially. And that's just too many at this point. So... I'm not sold on it. If they're going to do it, which I think they will, there's a stink bug on my light right there. Son of a bitch. I can't. Don't smash them. Do not smash them. I'm telling you the audience, not anyone else. But if Texas does do it, it is what it is. I have a feeling that they more than likely will. We'll have to wait and see on it, though. So let me know in the comments. Do you agree with the penalties that Joey Logano and Stuart Haas Racing got? And do you want to see Texas become a super speedway under the guise that it could give us a finish like we saw on Sunday night? Regardless, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.